Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, and joining me tonight is Dan Gudima. Dan, glad to have you on the broadcast. I know uh, I want let everybody know what you're doing, and then we'll get to the main event, your t- topic tonight. Uh, hi, this is Dan Gudima. Um, we're, you know, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing a lot of things. Uh, we're trying to, right now, my main bu- one of my main businesses, I have a bunch of companies I'm involved in, is uh, the largest speed dating company in the country, and we were trying to, this is the middle of, this is the coronavirus. This is, you know, I was telling Scott tonight, we're going to be talking about off-the-cuff startup activity or gut reaction startup activity, and that's really where we're at today. And that's what I'm in the middle of trying to take a, we're taking an event company and taking it virtual right now, this week. All right, well, just to let everybody out there know, Dan and I met at a networking event up in West Palm Beach, and uh, what about a m- When people used to meet, ago? that was when people used to actually meet. Yeah, right, yeah, it all <laughs> seems, no kidding. Uh, in person. Yeah, yeah, once upon a time, just a short time <laughs> ago, but anyways, you know, Dan and I met at West Palm Beach, and then we go out there to this one event, Omar Perio's involved. And now Omar, yeah. we end up Peru. going ahead and signing up for this one thing. Oh, he, so yeah, yeah. So now it's up to the two of us to make that investment work. Or oh yeah, o- Omar Peru, founder of LA Fitness. We right. became we you know only once in my life did I ever go to an event and sign up, and that was when they convinced me I was a. By the end of the night, they paid a lot of money and they convinced me I was a uh, a travel agent. And then I found out the next day I wasn't a travel agent. Yeah, well, <laughs> humble pie. Never heard of it. But but I think Omar Peru, I, I just, the guy, we just both heard him and we were like, oh, we need a man. You know, I mentor a lot of people. I want, I need a mentor. I, I want him as my mentor. That's why. Well, same here. Yeah. So obviously, the one thing, I know well, you and I have a few projects that we're working on. Do you have mm-hmm. any, do you want to let our audience give them a rough idea what we yeah. might do as we solidify it later on? Yeah, absolutely. So we, over the last, actually, for the last seven years, I've run a pitch event in Boca Raton called Start a Pop. Um, we, our last one was in January, I believe. Um, we had to cancel them because of coronavirus. But um, now what we're looking at over the next year is we're looking at taking our pitch event, a pitch event, when I say start a pitch event, that's a, a, a place where we have 100 people come to a location in Boca Raton. We have two, three, four investors, and we have five startups pitch, like a Shark Tank kind of thing, but, um, but more, we're, we're more subtle than a Shark Tank. There's no, there's no dollars written. Now, what I'm saying to Scott is I want to take it to the next level. Uh, I wanted to help me. I'd like to take our event, and we're going to turn it into like uh, Battle of the Startups. I'm using the term right now. It's right, not fully right. fleshed out, but the people who've been to my, I've had, you know, I've had at least a thousand people have been to my events in the last five, six years. They, they, as soon as they get the concept, they'll get it. They'll understand it. It's just got to be a great event. I'm not sure if it's a whole day event or a half day event, but it's just all the startups will battle and there'll be one. In the end, that's yeah. what we're planning. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to being a big part of that event. You know, whether yeah. I'm out there interviewing a lot of people and yeah. doing a lot of videos, not only to help my YouTube channel here, the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, but the endless possibilities that you and I have to be able to team up on lots of different events is what intrigues me about the whole idea. And you know, it's hard to believe this. We've had almost 400 companies pitch in in the seven years of running this event. In just Boca Raton. That's not right. Miami. That's not West Palm. That's not Orlando. It's just Boca Raton, which doesn't seem like a big town for startups. But there is a lot of there are a lot of startups. Somebody called me once and said, "We're out of the blue." Called me because I was running a tech incubator in Boca Raton at one point called BSX Labs. This guy calls me and says, "Dan, I heard you're uh, uh, Boca Raton Silicon Valley." I said, "No, no, 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 no." I said, "South Florida Silicon Valley." I said, "No, no, no." I call it retirement. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is too. <laughs> because the average person who does a tech startup in Boca Raton, from my experience, is close to fifty. This oh, is not, you know, the typical in the United States has always been like 25, 26, 27. But Boca Raton, we get these people from New York, from the Midwest, from Detroit, Chicago. They come from all around the country. They come to Boca Raton, ex tech guys like me, and they want to do a startup. I've I've met startup guys with a set a seventy eight year old startup guy. I met an eighty five year old startup guy. I found out because these startup guys are so old that if you're over like 75, patent office has a has a uh, fast. They have a front of the line process. Right. <laughs> if you're over 75 and you're applying for a patent, there is a way to go right to the front of the line. <laughs> so are you telling me there's a Colonel Sanders somewhere around the lines with these startups? Because um, after I, all, he went ahead and got started with absolutely, KFC. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know what? 
it just it's not a young man it's not necessarily a young man's game everybody's into it I mean and you know the thing that's most amazing about this one guy who was around the one guy who was around 78 years old um, is when I saw his startup and he actually showed me what he did I was like amazed it was one of those like one hit wonder startups with a really interesting right. technology what he had done let me tell you what he done what was that what he was showing me is he had it was a technology programmer like me I'm a software developer he had taken a single image like a like a JPEG you know right. a JPEG image and he had embedded another image and hid it in the JPEG so you have one JPEG with an image hidden inside of it so what ha what that second image was is an advertisement right so when the image arrives he had a, a technology he had a patent he was applying for and technology so when an image arrived from one phone when I when I texted you an image it would first show the ad the image would Right. And then it would fade and show you the full image. Unreal. It was really a cool technology. So, And he had figured this out. And, and it was all, I can't remember what it was. The thing that's so cool about being at these startup pitch events, and I used to MC them and hear all these stories, is that, like, you know, you get to hear the whole, like, I can't remember the guys, that, the, I can't remember what it was. This guy saw a movie. I can't remember the movie. And after the movie, he was like, I am going to make this program. Because something in the movie just got to him, and then he like spent two, three weeks of his life round the clock. I mean, I, I meet these developers who are crazy, but he, but it was an amazing idea, and and I took him to see a patent. A lot of times I'll hold their hand, take him to the patent, see a patent guy, um, Howard Gittin. If you're out there listening, I don't think he's listening. He's a great patent guy that I've used in the past. I have a couple patents issued in my name, um, of which two I think are active still, and another five, six. Patent, you know, some patent pendings have my name on it. Every time, you know, my big thing is I tell my wife, no more new startups. No <laughs> yeah, more right. new startups. Right. Um, there are some negative things if you don't, you know, I've had one startup that we blew out in three years and sold off. Right. But, you know, when you get involved in too many things, you can't focus. And oh, I, yeah. I don't know if you picked up that I have ADD, so we're, we're, we're yeah, on to well, you know. I haven't been diagnosed with it, but my attention yeah. level isn't very high either. So if you want to call me unofficial ADD I mean, or caffeine, too much caffeine, 111, uh, you know, so be it. The big, another big mistake I tell people. What's that? Um, a big mistake about uh, people looking at investments, or, or, or South Florida mistake, we'll call it, to think that people with money know, what they're, know something. Right. That, that money equals intelligence. Major mistake. I can tell you that you know. Even me, look at me. I'm not a big time. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not a millionaire. Um, I've made some money. Just you would look at me and say, "Oh, he's not smart because he hasn't made a lot of money." Well, I can tell you for a fact that the biggest mistakes made in the startup world are. What, I've seen this like a dozen times. Guy has his first startup, real successful, somewhat successful. Guy has a, wants to do another startup, and they throw money at him. Right. Doesn't matter what the idea is. And they almost always fail. Second time around, almost all tech guys fail the second time around. Almost every time. It's just the way it is. And it's because they thought they were smart. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things that you uh, that are on your agenda tonight. I talk, yeah. you know you talk about COVID-19. So yeah. why don't so you give the audience a COVID basic uh, uh, so overview. This is a very unusual period in time because as a tech starter person, I'm, and I see this happening in the, in the whole tech, tech community. I know a bunch of other startups. First of all, what COVID-19 has helped us kind of rethink out is what is a startup? Okay, that's the real question. So what is it, and really what it is in the end, to me, it's not a perfect software program or an app or all that stuff. I'm, trust me, I'm involved in all those things. It's just solving a problem and making a buck, okay? If you can solve a problem and make a buck, you're on to a startup idea. And this is the biggest gut reaction startup I've, I've ever been involved with. I, I made some decisions in the past few weeks to just like just start having webinars. Right. I had webinar after webinar after webinar. About 12, <laughs> by the 12th webinar, I realized I'm burning, I'm not making any money, but like I'm, I'm just searching. You know, I have this thing like um, there's, there's these things where you start working on a tech startup of some sort, mm -hmm. in some way, and right. you have some early success. And when you start seeing that growing and plateauing, going up and up and up, you know you're onto something. And then I've had many, many, many failures where we start going along, we're plowing along, and we're just like searching the dark for a business model. Right. This is not good, okay? The best startups are the ones where you made, like in my first text, you know, I had a career, mm -hmm. a corporate career for about, you know, 12 years or so. And at the end of that, and I've been in, in and out of corporate since then, since then but I, my first startup was working at a job, and 
we were running these events and bam, the money was being made every night. Some of you know, some of you were like ten thousand dollars a month, twenty thousand a month. So things were growing, and you, when you're in a really good, you know, I've had, I've been involved in at least three or four from large business to small business, what I call rapid growth situations. And as a startup, you want the scaling. We call it scale, like scalable solutions or scalable things. Even in my corporate life. Right. And once you get into that scalable growth curve, and you're just feeling it, and you're you're seeing the money, you can make certain decisions, grow a business. Okay? Right. So a lot of time, I see a lot of mistakes. So a lot of mistakes I see, you know, tech startups make, and I've made it, is we get fixated with a concept, and we build out tech, and we go through all this stuff. But really, what we what I'm doing right now, and and every tech startup should be doing this, especially during the coronavirus, is is testing. We're testing the waters. I've mm-hmm. been testing whether there's a market for um, uh, a market for more webinar management, like webinar management. Right. And even though there's tons of webinar systems out there, there's still some opportunity for me because there's a weakness. Like I've run, there's a weakness with Zoom. The biggest simple weakness with Zoom is you have to download, you have to download the list of attendees <laughs> and right. you collect the names. So I've run webinars for a dozen people who are just not that technically with it. And just getting the data and the email out and collecting. You'll notice if you do use Zoom, you don't get the, the cell phone number. Just getting people's cell phone number because everyone wants a text. Right. Okay, so just fixing. Sometimes startups are just about fixing a small problem. And uh, interestingly enough, I, I, I don't know if he'll actually – I may I'll send him this podcast. Larry Weil, the, the sponsor guy. Right. Larry, the sponsor guy. He and I talked about how th- the, this is opportunity for startups come when the world shifts. Okay. Now, one of the things he and, and these are important things you learn. One of the things that's important that happen, and you'll look around and see all this important change. It's at these points of change when the startup really has an opportunity. Right. One of the things he mentioned to me is all, because all the events got plowed out, all the conferences for the rest right. of the year. He has he's got Coca Cola with you know a billion dollar budget and no conferences to spend it on. So. That's another thing, finding where there's money and how do we take advantage of that money and how we spend that money for them and how we make right. it possible for them to spend the money. It's just so much better to be in a startup that's making money and, and, and where there's a revenue flowing in and we can take advantage of it. On the other side, I'm working with a bunch of entrepreneurs who are trying to create certain businesses and they're practically crying to me because they're not making a dime. I'll be right. honest with you. And we're all working our asses off. Oh, okay? yeah. And so it's really, you know, and when I say gut reaction, I've made a lot of gut reaction decisions in the past week. Um, I'm running every Friday night. I'm involved in a virtual wine tasting right. run by Lou Zant and uh, Meredith Griffin of Major Crush Podcast. It's right. one, of pod- one of the top wine podcasts in the country after a year. It's like blown out at Sonoma. And I'm helping them, trying to get them to the next level. <clears throat> and, it, and, and there's opportunity. This is the moment of opportunity for people. Um, you just have to kind of Look at where the failures are in the market, and you can get in there and you can do your thing. Um, and, it, and if you're a technology person, you know tech guys. The biggest problem with tech guys is they don't look at the business model. They're just like, oh, I can make a social network and we'll pop it together. But the fact is, you got to ask people. This is the tough thing for me because I'm a tech guy. Is like, you you have money, right? And what do you what are you willing to spend it on? And ask people right. and and get out there and talk about it. The lack of physical events has made it tough for this tech startup world. Oh yeah. Right now, but uh, it's going on. People are figuring out how to make money. Um, I don't. There's a whole industry of people that make money on YouTube. The other thing I want to mention as well is the five. You know, Google, Facebook, uh, Apple. Uh, uh, what's the f- final one? I can't remember. There's five. But anyway, those well, five. I, well, well, the ones I deal with are Apple, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, well, Google. The five big, which is Google, Amazon. Um, There's Stitcher, Apple. I think, is out there in Anchor. Let me just say something. Okay. Those four, so there's four big ones. Those companies are stifling innovation. This is my my opinion. Okay. Those four companies are now the IBMs of the past. Okay. okay. They're all 20 years old. I, you know, Google is even is clo- will be 20 years old within a year or so. They're old. They're old. They're stifling innovation. This is the reality. Right. And they've actually what we call created barriers to entry. Right. Like no one will make a no one will make a, um, a an app for anything mapping right now. Why? Because of Google. Everything Google does today and Amazon does today is not innovative. What they're doing is closing the door, closing the door, closing the door. So we have the, uh, my opinion is we're in the least innovative period 
of the internet than we've been in in 25 years. Right. Um, because these big companies have made it very tough. Now, on the periphery, there are people that are doing some innovative things and trying to bypass. Everything's about bypassing the big guys right now. That's right. what it's all about. This, this stuff, we can, we can make real content. You can make this podcast. You can make, I'm doing tons of, uh, I've done like 12 webinars in the last two weeks. And, and Google can't control us, okay? Right. But if they could, here's my opinion. They may say that they're, they're oh, we're trying to help you. They're not, okay? Not only is Google stifling innovation, Google is listening to everything you're saying, every, taking every word you're saying, and putting in a crunching machine and selling your data. It's happening to all of us. Right. You type in a search and say, uh, I was searching on, uh, oh, what's the price of, um, of um, uh, whatever, whatever that burrito place that everyone loves. I was searching up this place, and then mm -hmm. I go over to Facebook. I was on my desktop. Mm -hmm. I go over to my Facebook, and I open it up, and there's an ad on another device right. in another app. In another thing, because the AI has taken my data and sold it over to that person. Interesting. But this is what's going on. Okay, oh, yeah. they're in collusion. Amazon and Google, and Apple. Okay, as like this monopoly of money. Okay, so we as an entrepreneur startup community, we have to break the system, break them. Okay, go around them, um, do things that they're not. You know, go and find other ways. Right. And they're the enemy. I'm sorry to tell you that. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, we have to. Uh, the enemy is those in charge. Right. Facebook's the enemy, okay? If anything, I would tell you, I'm only on there because everyone's on there. It, look at Facebook. It's completely uninnovative. It hasn't changed in 20 years. My two sons, 10 and 12, they don't even know about Facebook. They don't have an account, they don't care, and they don't understand. The average person on Facebook, to me, is 55 years old. So th they on, they're going to well, start using the reason TikTok. why they are is, first of all, they're trying to connect with people from yesteryear. That's one of the major reasons I got on there. Now they got a problem. Well, if they change Facebook, all of, all of us who are 55 to 70 will be like, we don't understand, so they can't right. change. So change, innovation is very tough for a big company, even right. Facebook. Um, you know, it was funny because they announced a year ago, oh, Facebook's going into dating. A year later, they are in dating. No one cares. Right. Facebook tried e-commerce four years ago. They failed miserably, okay? And, right. and there's many reasons why. Just because you're big and have all the money in the world doesn't mean you know how to do it. Right. Okay? So there's a lot, I think right now, because of gut reaction, there's a lot of opportunity, a tremendous amount of opportunity. And even, I was talking to one friend of mine whose son's sitting around his house, and his son and I were spitballing, you know, some ideas for a startup. And I said, um, his son's name is Jonah. I said, why don't you call your new service just called Jonah? And why don't you put flyers in all the mailboxes in your neighborhood? Because right. the seniors in his neighborhood need, they need the, uh, they need the, they need shit done, okay? They were right. in this period right. where... So the opportunity was to create a delivery service that's very unique, where you call them and they tell you what they want. You can get them milk on a Monday. So they're, we're in a period. No senior is using Instacart, okay? <laughs> Zero. No, Zippo. Sure. I was talking to my mother who's 80 about it. No. So I was saying to John that there's, there's an opportunity uh, to become a service offering, to right. become a massive delivery service. Um, and If you can be human in your communication, because... The re reality is, fifty percent of the market, sixty percent will never go to Instacart. I don't use Instacart. Do you use Instacart? I don't know yeah. what it is until you brought it up. <laughs> there you go. So I mean, the tech, you know, the twenty to twenty, the twenty to 32, 4, 35 year old market, they know all about Instacart. Right. So um, there's a lot of opportunity. This, this is what I'm trying to say here. There's a lot of opportunity in the startup world if you kind of dissect it and find where there's shit not happening and the people are upset about it. Like right. my mother is leaving the house and she should not leave her house. Right. She needs to stay put. She needs a good delivery service. She needs like a personal assistant. My mother's eight years old. She needs a PA and she's willing to pay for it. Happy to pay for it. Right. And that's that's how an entrepreneur, it took me a long time because I wasn't trained as a kid. I had to learn. The entrepreneur, he looks at the situation and finds that, 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 that little slice opportunity and starts solving it and, and figuring out that problem. And from that, all the tech can become tech and all kinds of things can happen. Right. So it's not about dreaming. A lot of tech people, we dream of a tech solution. We dream it up. And then we try fitting it to market. We try to fit the tech to the market. Right. It doesn't work. The answer is to to start with an idea and, and fix a few things. And um, uh, also I just want to mention that uh, one more thing. Oh, how much time we got? We're almost we got about seven, eight minutes. I want to mention um, <laughs> my I've been in business for 19 years on and off because we sold the company and got it back the largest dating event company in the country. And it's many different kind of events. Everything came to a grinding halt about three weeks ago. Right. Um, we're going to start up in a few weeks, but we're in the middle 
of trying to switch our company over to virtual events. Um, and we're not yet there. We have competitors doing it like gangbusters. Um, we had been planning this for years and we just never built the tech ourselves. And we had overthought it a bit, but now we're close to a deal and hopefully we'll be going live with virtual events. Um, the truth is, you know, when at my, my point and your point as well, we're so embedded in the crap we're doing that we can't really pursue a new idea. We, we have to kind of just take what we're currently doing, our platform, or what we're doing, and find ways to get extensions of it and build, right? Right. But for younger people, the rules don't matter. You know, I have an entrepreneur friend who rules don't matter to him. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting way to grow up. Right. Um, it's, it's, his, it's in his DNA because of his family and background, and, and he was never given rules. He had right. no, he grew up in a ruleless, a ruleless world. So he just like breaks rules. So when I, I spent time worth helping him with a bunch of things, he would call me and say, I'm on the phone with the president of this, this company. I'm like, how are you on the phone with the president? So I called him, said, I need to talk to you. So like, you did what? So like, I, I got a lot of really good insight from him that rules don't always matter in the startup world. You need to like throw the rules out the door and solve a problem, make people happy figure out a, a, a figure out a little solution and build from there and uh, and the opportunities this is a point like when we started that dating event company it was the year was night um, it was exactly 2001 and we and others were doing it and this is the way it always works others are doing it you're doing it and it was good to have competition our competition right now we're going from uh, in-person events to online events right. we have a lot of competitors suddenly and that's good they're educating the market right. you don't have to if you, a lot of startups have a product that they're trying to educate the market about their product. Right. That's a losing proposition often. Having competitors is a good thing. And they're educating the market and it widens and opens the market. And that could bring you in to, to make a major, a major. Now, there's exceptions to that. Um, a good startup in both areas called Tap to Open. You ever heard of that one? No, can't say I have. Tap to Open has developed a mobile app that you pop onto the existing gate system in your HOA. Right. And you leave the current system in place, but it's ancient, right? With a little button, right. the buzzer and everything. And But this new system plugs into it, and then suddenly you can go on your phone and say to your friend, say uh, the the the, um, the cleaning person's coming at 5 p.m. tomorrow and put her, her cell phone in. When you hit go, she gets a code. When she gets to the, the gate, she puts her code and it opens the gate. Right. Now, let me give you a little bit of a background of some of the things I've attempted to do with startups. I remember... Okay. A long time ago, I had a company called Bullseye Communications, really. Yeah. Uh, but that never panned out. I never pursued it, depending on what I was trying to use the name for. Okay. I, I have a 215 license, so even though there was never an LLC there, yeah. that was an opportunity to potentially gr build a business. Gotcha. And, you know, I've worked on 1099 many times, but the one we're doing here at the South Florida Tribune is one it's where I real really startup. sunk my teeth into you it's bet. It's a startup, but it's not a tech startup. It's a start. Well, of course not. Yeah. No, you're not building a tech, you know, repetitive. Well, I'm not that tech. smart enough to do that, and all this Zoom stuff here. You don't here. have to. You don't have to. Yeah, the tech stuff goes to my other half. Can do. No. There's so much. There's so much opportunity with what exists. You don't right. need to do any tech. Now, my extent with the Zoom, I got to tell you, I'm getting better with it. Yeah. The only thing I've ever done with Zoom is what I do on the interstates, uh, <laughs> and when smoking the bandit. Uh, thankfully, I don't have the to deal crazy, with that. The crazy thing is, there have been there are at least a dozen companies that do virtual conferences. Right. There's there's 25 competitors to Zoom, just to let you know. Oh, yeah. And another 30, 40 other companies that do it, like Hova, Hova, or there's a bunch. And then there's WebEx. There's all these companies out there. So this is a really interesting question. How does Zoom come from all these 100 companies and become the company that Jimmy Fallon is using uh, during his show? Yeah, well, there's a lot of different things about You know what? Sometimes the best is not always the winner. I can appreciate it. There, there's a lot of things right now. Talk to me in about 30 days about Zoom. I might have a better understanding. But, but you would never think a company could like break through like this, like become another Google. But Zoom is Zoom is on its way to become Microsoft or Google. Well, let me tell what's you what's going on. Well, let me tell you this, though, uh, and we do have another few more minutes to go. The NFL will be doing their draft virtually. Really? Be very. Oh, yeah. Roger Goodell, the commissioner, will be in his basement making the picks. And I was get slated to go to Jacksonville mm -hmm. to work with the Jaguars, but obviously COVID-19 uh, took away those plans. So uh, virtual will get a real 
test a week from I mean, Thursday for the NFL draft. Hold on. Yeah. Well, for the NFL draft, which will go with all three days, so we're going to get a good education over this. In terms of my use of social media, Facebook, Wait I do second. what I've got to do. You could be creative. I mean, why don't you have – you could have during the draft, it, which is on TV, right, TV. Right. You could have a Zoom call where you're just – you could have a webinar Zoom thing, and you're running your own Zoom during the whole thing, and people are listening to you separately. You know what's interesting? The what's one that? thing about Zoom that really – the one piece of Zoom that I, I talk about a lot of the tech startup stuff is Zoom allows people to interact. Right. This, you got TV – like we did this virtual wine tasting on Friday, so if you watch this TV show like virtual wine tasting on PBS on six p.m., you'd be like, "Yeah, well, I'm watching the virtual." It's not interactive. When you're on a Zoom call, you're watching the people doing stuff, right. and you're like, "Oh, uh, show us the wine bottle." People are saying, "Show us the wine bottles up close." There's some the interactive piece, which is missing from TV, is really opportunity. Oh yeah, and I, and I, I've been able to recognize that. Hey, listen, now I'm not been on about ten or twelve Zoom calls. Two or three from so, family up north. So I'm, I'm one of those kinds of guys just getting into this. And when we have this conversation with Zoom look, in four to six weeks, I, I might get better at it. I can schedule a Zoom with you. I have, and I have the Zoom webinar version and I have the Zoom pro version. Right. I can schedule a Zoom for you during this draft where you're telling all these people, come on, and they could all be on with you, like 100 to 300 people, okay? Yeah. At least 100 people. And they could all be commenting and you could be like talking with each person. They could be texting. They could come. So right. like that interaction. To me, is the breakthrough for Zoom. Right. That's the breakthrough point. Uh, we've been running these SBA COVID nineteen videos, right? Zoom calls, and the people they they already not have a lot of the knowledge, but they want to interact and ask more questions and hear other people's questions. So this this our TV system is, and that's oh that was number five Comcast. Number five is Comcast. It's not interactive. Right. Comcast is not interactive. Right. And look about the innovation there. Where's the innovation with that? It's been 20 years of crappy Comcast. They finally made the UI nicer. But I'm saying with a simple UI, Zoom call, you're better than Comcast. Well, okay. That, that's de definitely worth because noting. people can be on and chat with you oh, yeah, while they're I watching know. the other program. Yeah, well. Is it with their double computer? So I'll have to think about your NFL idea, although I've already got alternative ways to communicate with the team and other things. But it's no, interesting. No, I'm talking the, 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 the watchers, the interested parties, the people that are listening to you. Yeah. The, I'm just saying that that's the missing piece with TV. Right. No, I hear and, you. And we can ourselves jump in there. I haven't done this, but I'm into like right now for COVID-19, I'm totally into like Star Trek and. Oh, yeah. You know, Picard. I'm watching Picard. Um, and, you know, if there was some live thing, I've hosted a lot of these. I would do a Zoom call and let people all chat about it. Yeah. Uh, and that's very much related to this new idea we have for our dating event company. Right. Where we get people who have commonality to meet with each other. And that's not about dating. It's about getting together to chat about something they have in common with, like movies, whatever it is. Yeah, but you know what, though? Let me say this so we, uh, as before we wrap up the yeah. broadcast. Okay, I would be very intrigued to sit in with you uh, during the dating because, you yeah. know what, that to yeah. me, not, now you've caught my interest. And there's another part of it. The, the company, we're, the tech company, which I can't mention that we're partnering with, they have the ability to not just record these calls. If people agree, I, I don't mind being recorded. Right. But if two people agree that I, 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 don't, I don't mind being live streamed, we could have on YouTube you watching dates. I can only imagine. <laughs> I know. I can only imagine. So there's some new stuff coming in the next few months that we're working on that are going to be surprisingly interesting and different. And there's there's even though Google is behind the times, they've opened up the door to the live streaming. I clicked one button and my I was live streaming on YouTube from from Zoom. So all these like technologies are all becoming interconnected. And there's opportunity there. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. There's opportunity there. Uh, I, you know, I just mentioned something with Zoom that you could use Zoom to basically have all these people who are interested. Right. Because right now, I would never be, I would be more interested in the Zoom call than we're watching the draft. The draft's boring. I'm watching the draft, but I'm watching the draft. I can interact. I can communicate. Right. I can have right. my opinion. Today, what they do is they let people tweet. And the Twitter thing's going across the bottom. Right. That's the beginning of something big. Just okay. that little piece. Very interesting how you tie yeah. them all together. Yeah, that's all integrated. Oh together. yeah, no, I know, I understand. Just, they've been holding back the dam. That Twitter thing is is twenty years old. Twitter's fifteen years old. All these tech we're talking about 
It's ancient tech. So if, any, if anything comes out of COVID-19, and not much, but really Something will. Something big's coming out. Yeah, I know. So we got to find that. And obviously, we've identified interactive. Real interactivity. Real right. interactivity. And, and Zoom, obviously, not being bullshit. the quarterback of it. So. TV's bullshit. Uh, I agree. This is what it's coming down to. All right. You know, when I watch it, when I watch, when I'm really into the University of Maryland basketball team, uh-huh. and I'm watching them, and they're and they're doing well. I would be on there chit chatting too with people, but what's happened is that does not exist like that. That's the, it's you have to go on to like a magazine and see other comments, and it's like old and it. And what happened really was in the early. Someone was mentioned Yahoo to me in the early days of Yahoo. Right. You could get on there and chit chat, and everything was great. Spammers came in and they destroyed. I don't know if you remember this. Spammers right. came in and destroyed the communities. Oh yeah. All of Yahoo got destroyed by. Sp- like, you'd log in. First, you could chat with people. This is like 20 years ago. And then a couple of years later, I would log in and, like, spam things or zip it up. And you click a link, it takes over your right. computer. Weird shit like that blew up the community because tech people were smart about it. Uh-huh. And Yahoo left it all open. Right. But the but people love the interactivity. They love to chat with each other. That's that's a, that's a piece where the door is open. All right. Well, we've got a new animal. We'll just see how much it growls. Right, Dan? So yeah, that's let, it. As we put a wrap on this uh edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast, why don't you let our listeners know how they can get a hold of you? Oh, you can always find me at my website, which right now it's it's just at j- my new website, justaskdan.com. It's still a, it's, we have one event on there, but it, it's going to be something new. And also, if you are interested in startups, definitely go to startuppop.com and get on the list there for when we do have, we're going to probably have a virtual one by the end of this year, pitch event. Uh, and finally, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at at, at D G U D E M A. And if you really want to talk to me, you can email me at Dan at startuppop.com. Two P's. All right, you are listening to the South Florida Tribune podcast on the South Florida Tribune uh, Broadcasting Network. Just to give you an idea what types of shows we have on the uh, on the networks, the Sports Exchange, our big sports show, the South Florida Tribune podcast, for what you guys are listening. The Mo- Motor Man and Rude Dog. Motor Mouth and Wild Bill Winters. Dan had an opportunity to listen in on that one. The Real <laughs> and the Rare, which appears a couple uh, times a month on Friday nights, fantasy football. Myself and Ryan Skullroot and 108 Stitches Baseball Talk with David Levin. So, uh, you Now, if you want to follow me on social media, feel free to do it at Tribune South on Twitter. And, of course, Scoop with five threes. Go to South Florida, uh, then you go to Facebook, look for uh, the South Florida Tribune, like the page. Go to Instagram. You can go to South Florida Tribune and like the page as well. And the one thing that's important to let people understand that these broadcasts can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. Those are the main ones. So, you know, Dan, it's been a pleasure having you on the broadcast, and I think both of us can agree that mm-hmm. we hope that everybody is out there be safe, make wear masks, and, and we want to thank our first responders for, you know, taking care of everybody. It's important. You know, at some point this will pass, and we look forward to bringing you back on the broadcast tonight. So, Dan, it's been a, well, I've had a great time having you on the show, and and you know, again, I expect us to have a lot more good projects as time goes on. And I know we were able to figure it out before, and you know, with the ideas that we brainstorm, we do belong to a networking group as well. So, to me, the possibilities are unquestionably uh, without. It, out. So go ahead and check us out on SouthFloridaTribune.com. Uh, so on behalf of Dan Gudima, my name is Scott Morgan Ross, wishing you a good night. Yeah, you know, it's interesting.